What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Help other people to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores Cannon has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT. Now you can learn her method by going directly to themoreshow.com forward slash QHHT. And don't forget to mention the discount coupon More Talks. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? and can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Hi, my name is Jonathan Martin. I'm uh, an extraterrestrial channel. I'm um, now back in the UK after spending three and a half years in Peru, just arrived back. I've been channeling extraterrestrials since a contact experience, contact and awakening experience I had in the forest here, not too far from here in the UK back in 2009, where I kind of had this kind of traditional awakening where I went into kind of unity consciousness felt I was connected to everything and in that moment I felt like I had access to all information in the universe Kevin was just joking that maybe I knew the lottery numbers but unfortunately I didn't have access to that information it's kind of what I felt like was I had access to whatever information was relevant for kind of my spiritual growth in that moment which unfortunately didn't include the lottery numbers, but it did include a lot of information about like connections I had to extraterrestrial civilizations and stuff. And then a few days after that, I went back to the forest and had some telepathic communications with these extraterrestrials that made me cry because I experienced such intense joy in that communication with the ETs as I kind of merged frequency with them that it just made me cry to know that it was possible to experience so much joy on earth because up until that moment I'd heard these stories about it but I'd never really experienced it so just to know that it was possible to experience such intense joy and know that it was not only possible for myself but also for my friends and family and humanity as in general just made me cry my eyes out and ever since then, I've had kind of had this psychic awareness. I've been very empathic, been able, been able to feel everyone's energies around me, which is sometimes not that much fun when you're living on Earth. It's great when everyone's happy. But as you know, everyone's not always happy on Earth. So I feel all this. But um, one of the side effects of this is that I'm very psychically open and able to now channel extraterrestrials and bring through wisdom from extraterrestrial civilizations. OK, so um, three years in Peru. Did you want to come back? 
did, did I want to come back to the UK? Yeah, I, 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 I was I was ready to come back to the UK. It felt time to come back. It was Peru is a really amazing place, but um, yeah, like I say, one of the one of the teachings that the Yaya teach, very similar to to Bashar uh, channeled by Daryl Anker, who they're connected to, they teach about following our highest excitements. And I don't really second guess it. I just go with the flow. But it, it definitely felt like it was time. It became exciting again to come back to the UK. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, so you must have been there at the height of uh, COVID then. It must have. Yeah, that that was kind of what turned it into a three and a half year stay rather than just a, a six month stay. I was I was there when COVID hit, and I, I literally moved into a, a new hostel just as they were announcing COVID, and we all got locked down. We turned it into, into this kind of party for the first few weeks. And then um, they offered us emergency flights back home or they said, you can just stay and we'll wipe your visas. You don't need visas. And I, I'm like, why would I go back to UK in the m- middle of um, middle of a, you know, emergency situation when I'm having such fun here? We're having a kind of this nonstop party in the hostel. And um, so I decided to stay, not, not expecting that um, it was going to last so long. And, and then kind of the reason I ended up staying so long was I actually got COVID and so I couldn't travel back obviously to start with but then even when I was recovered I was having some breathing issues and um, the the, the local airport in the Sacred Valley is in in a sacred city known as Cusco which is at really high altitude and so I so I couldn't get to the airport because because I didn't dare go in any higher altitude than I was already at because I was having breathing issues and it's like the, the airport's like 3,500 metres, which is well into the um, altitude sickness zone. So that kind of extended my stay a little bit longer than my excitement initially intended. But I actually ended up because of that going down into the lowest altitude place in the Sacred Valley, which is around 2,800 metres um, because of this breathing issues. But it was actually a place called Oriente Tambo which is all actually, um, it's like a temple site built by what I believe was either beings from Atlantis or extraterrestrials. It's all like like these um, structures that are built like they're cut out with lasers and they're all slotted together without using mortar and they're built at incredibly high precision. And I ended up staying in, in this village, which officially is um, the only living Inca village, possibly in the world, but definitely in Peru. And so officially it's Inca, but I believe it was much older. So I was I kind of I was I was kind of semi joking, saying that I was I actually spent a year and a half living in a in a village built by extraterrestrials. <laughs> <laughs> so and going back to your story where it it links back to extraterrestrials as well. So you so you channel the Yeah, the 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 yeah, yeah. I channel a lot of um, civilizations, but um, the the one I'm most connected with is a civilization known as the yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've now I've I've come across other channels that channel that um, particular civilization as well. There's one in um, the Netherlands. Um, There's a few. There's a few. Uh, Do you think you're all channeling the same um, uh, beings in a sense, or? Um. Well, we're, I think we're all channeling different beings, but but they also they kind okay. of speak as a collective. That they they kind of operate as a unity consciousness, as I understand it. So while I do channel an individual who oft, often presents himself as called Tahinio Ra, um, they he always says like we, like speaking from the perspective of the whole collective. They they're like a unity conscious civilization, and they're all telepathically connected. So while we all like channel like different beings yeah they they kind of speak as one civilization okay so thank you so look when you started to channel or actually just before you started to channel let's go back a little bit here right so was you in the best estate where was jonathan at that at this point had he ever come across any channel material before um just take us on that that journey just a little bit Okay, so so how it all happened for me was round about 2007, 2008. I, I was not in a very good state, to be honest. I was going through a lot of uh, mental, emotional problems. I was going through some physical challenges, which, like a lot of us, started my spiritual journey. I was re- researching a lot of stuff. I initially got into conspiracy theories, um, which led me kind of down the rabbit hole of coming across ufology, which led me to the teachings of 
Dr. Stephen Greer, who does what's this called, this CE5 meditation, where you do this meditation to invite in extraterrestrial craft. And I start, I started doing this meditation every day for about seven weeks. And after doing it for about seven weeks, actually here where, where I am, I'm back at my, my mother's property in the UK. I'm just staying here at the minute. And so this is where it started for me. So I did this meditation like every night for about seven weeks, which is designed to invite an extraterrestrial craft. And I had a spate of three UFO sightings over this house. There was the, all crazy sightings. One of them, there was this golden ball of light flying over the house that actually sounded like uh, it was making jets of an aircraft engine, like a military jet. It's a bit strange. So I, I said to it in my head, because I've been doing a lot of research, I said, if you're a UFO, move up and down. And as soon as I said that, this golden ball of light suddenly went Doosh, and like shot up in the air like 200 foot. Like the instant I said that, it, it moved along. I think it went back down, then went back up again, you know, doing manoeuvres that were co completely impossible. You know, if it was a military aircraft, it was top secret. It's way beyond anything military aircraft can officially do. You know, aircraft can't just suddenly go Doosh, and turn on a dime and like instantaneously got 200 feet in the air. It moved along and it disappeared, blinked on and went off into the distance. And so th this is one of three sightings I had um, about. About. Um, I don't know it was about so it's about a year later and uh, no no about a few months later I came across the teachings of another channel called Bashar channel by Dawalanka and so so I, it was, I believe this was kind of a side effect of doing the ET contact visualizations because when I was doing the C5 uh, visualization to invite an extraterrestrial contact I was visualizing as part of the meditation the image of a traditional gray extraterrestrial so if you understand the concept of creating our own reality, I, I believe through doing this constant visualization of wanting to connect with the great extraterrestrial, I kind of manifested this timeline with Dawa Lanka channeling Bashar. So I listened to his teachings um, every day for about a year. And then it was 2009 where I had this experience I've just talked about, where I had like an awakening stroke contact experience in the forest in the UK that opened me up to the telepathic abilities. And so 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 although I felt I had a contact experience, I didn't remember anything of it very strangely. But I, I then actually again had this same experience or very similar state of euphoria, oneness, bliss, feeling something's happened, tapping into higher dimensions of reality. And like while I suspected I'd had some kind of contact experience, that I didn't remember this kind of classic missing time from ufology back in 2009. I had the same experience in 2018. And but what actually happened in 2018 was one minute I'm stood in one place in the forest having the same like enlightenment experience again. And then the next minute I'm stood in a different place in the forest. I'm stood in the prone position like this. And there's all these fighter jets flying around my head. Like I can't see them for the cloud cover and the forest cover. But like, but it, and like an instant before, it was dead silent. And I was just in the forest having like this spiritual experience, completely quiet. It was like a Tuesday morning or Monday morning or so. It's actually September the 11th, um, 2018, bit of a strange 9 11 coincidence with my previous conspiracy theory interest. And so one minute I'm in one place in the forest, it's deadly silent. Next thing I know, I'm stood in a different place in the forest. I'm in my kind of this prone position. My frequency has gone even higher. I feel like I'm one with the trees, one with even the fighter jets that I can't see, but I can sure as heck hear them because they're circling on my location. They're circling around, coming back on me, completely deafening. And like I'm kind of like, something's happened, something profound has happened here. I know this is to do, I know the reason these fighter jets are here because of me. And but I didn't know what had happened. And then after a few seconds, perhaps 30 seconds or so, a minute, I, it kind of dawned on me. I came back because I was kind of like all dazed. I didn't know what had happened. And like there's all these fighter jets there. And like, something's happened. Something amazing's happened. I know these fighter jets here because of me. And then after like a 30 seconds or a minute or so, it kind of dawned on me that I'd obviously had a contact experience because I've been into this and trying to make contact for so long. And obviously the fighter jet, I'd had like this classic missing time. Any of your viewers who know about UFOlogy, they might have heard about this thing called missing time. Um, like where, where you're just in one place and then you're in another place. And like sometimes they, they talk about recalling the experience in um, hypno hypnotic regression. But actually in um, about a week later in meditation, I actually started to have memories of what, what I experienced on that ship. And, and just as a side note, actually, 12 days 
after that on the September equinox in 2018, I did a Facebook live stream and um, the, the, the ships actually showed up on the live stream and it's still available on my Facebook um, page. If you if you go to my Facebook page, Jonathan Trinity Martin, and look at look at this live stream video from September 2018, September 23rd, 2018, you can actually see the live stream where um where I'm recording. And first of all, I think I see something out the corner of my eye and then loads of owls start hooting everywhere. And there's a lot of stories about owls being connected to UFO sightings. And um, a few minutes after that, they actually start flashing this in the live stream. It's all captured on the live stream in the video. So it's pretty cool that they actually showed up and gave a bit of evidence to corroborate my story. So then after that experience then um and also i should say when you say they showed up for you these fighter jets what you're saying that what, what i think you're saying is that there was um some object in the sky that should not have been there and these were sent to intercept that object but obviously if there's missing time then um then this object could have been there for you know for some for for a a time right um which yeah. is why it got caught up maybe on radar and um but you have no understanding of 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 you know before and after in a sense did you ever get any regression or did you ever um somehow try to get back into that memory of that missing time at any point in this journey yeah well 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 like i say about about a week later in meditation i actually recalled everything that happened happened, happened on the ship yeah and like um like and every time I actually relay that story, and I can explain what happened now if you like, I actually kind of go back into this heightened state of consciousness. W would you like me to share what I remember about? Well, being on yeah, ship? I mean, yeah, share with us what, yeah, what you saw on that ship then, and how how you did you even uh, in that meditation recall even how you got into the ship? Had it had it landed? I, d I don't know. I don't recall that. But I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just retell the story of exactly what I experienced in meditation one week later. So I sat down on the beach, still here in Lincolnshire, but on the east coast, about 40 miles away from here. And I sit down into a meditation. And um, the next thing I know in this meditation, I'm, I, I'm sat on an extraterrestrial craft. I'm um, I'm in this room that is very much like a white hotel room. There's a white bed. There's a white dressing table in front of in, in front of us. Um, I'm sat on the ed, end of this bed in front of a white dressing table, very much like a hotel with a, with a mirror in front of it. And we're sat on on the end of the bed, but just in front of the mirror. And to the right of me is my 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 Yael counterpart, the guide that I channel, the the the, the Yael extraterrestrial that I channel. Uh, but he's got a towel over his head, like completely covering his head, like he's got this towel and it's totally covering its face. Um, I've got some theories about what that's about. It might be something to do with about me not being ready to see him because he is kind of like quite different looking to us, you know, kind of like one of these great extraterrestrials. And I sensed he was inviting me to go into his consciousness, to project my consciousness, like through the towel covering his face into 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 his mind. And so I did this. And what he actually showed me, he actually showed me in an instance, much like a past life, much like a... And when someone has like a near death experience and they talk about going through a life review, I experienced um, this kind of thing. And actually, in one instant, he, he shows me all the suffering that my father had suffered due to me in my life. And like up until that point, I kind of been like, you know, you know, we had a typical father son relationship. My father's passed a couple of years now and we, we kind of healed all this before the end. But, you know, we had a typical father son relationship, quite, quite a bit of arguing. It was a good relationship generally, but we did fight a lot. And I always had like this kind of perspective. You know, I've been on this spiritual journey for like about nine, ten years by then. I had, I had this kind of perspective, you know, that he was a bad guy. He's always moaning at me. I'm a good guy and all this. And then um, like in this kind of vision I got shown, I got shown all, all the pain that I caused my father, that my father had suffered due to me. And and then and then Tahini also communicated to me that he he didn't judge us either better or worse. He actually loved my father equally as unconditionally as he loved me. And so this made me break down into tears. And after I kind of went through that something, I, it was kind of to like purify me. So I was ready to to like see the rest of what happened on the ship. And so after that, 
I remember walking through the ship. I got kind of taken on this tour through the ship, the rest of the ship. I, I, I sensed that Tahinia, my guide, was on the right, but I don't remember seeing him again. I felt like he was guiding me through the ship, and I was looking to the left. Everything was kind of a blue. There was this kind of blue lighting in the ship. And I first remember walking past what was kind of like a kitchen coffee table area. There was what seemed like a very low down coffee table in the middle on the left. There was typical like kitchen cabinets and work surface and cabinets behind it to the back. There was a couple of beings stood to the left of the coffee table. I don't remember that clearly, but sat on the edge of the kitchen counter was like a two and a half foot tall lady ladybug. We call them ladybirds in the UK. I think in the US you call them ladybugs. These, you know, these red beetles with the black spots. There was like a two and a half to three foot tall ladybug, like extraterrestrial, sat upright, you know, not down like a ladybug would normally be, but sat upright like this on the back of his shell with his little legs dangling over the edge of the kitchen counter like this two and a half foot, like um, ladybird extraterrestrial. I remember very vividly. Then I remember walk, continuing to walk on through the ship. I came to another area in the ship. In the background, there was like all kind of aquariums and vivariums. You know, vivariums are like aquariums without water in for like insects. And there was like, there was like all types of different extraterrestrial like insects and fish and things in these aquariums. There was like kind of this mantis, this really large like praying mantis-like insect. And stood in front of this, there was three extraterrestrials. I think one was kind of blue in colour. I don't remember two of them clearly. But there was one extraterrestrial that I remember very clearly. And he's what I call the Mayan extraterrestrial. There's this story that the Mayans ascended and, you know, no one knows where the Mayans went. And, and that they believe that a lot of them like ascended and became like higher dimensional beings. I don't know if that's true, but on this ship experience, what I recalled, I actually saw this extraterrestrial being or, the, or this being that just looked like kind of like a Mayan, like South American being. He had a very wide head. He was perhaps a little bit shorter than me. He had kind of these sticky out pug ears and he had like um, like a space helmet on. None of the other beings were wearing helmets, but for what I recall. Um, but he had like a glass helmet on, which was like a glass bubble helmet. And I distinctly remember it because it had like a flange around it, like, like a lip in the middle with bolts going through, with like rivets holding these two glass hemispheres together around his head. And I remember thinking how strange it was because I seemed to be in such an advanced, like interdimensional starship. And there's this, there, there's this being with this space, hel space helmet that seems to be like bolted together with like very rudimentary kind of human technology. So, you know, who knows? May maybe he was just a South American guy who was like in communication with these ETs and like went on this, but I don't know what's going on. But but that that's basically what I um what I recalled in meditation, you know, and, and people might say, well, that was just a vision in meditation. But of course, I had this experience, you know, in the forest like 12 days earlier. I've got this missing time. I've got I got very solid confirmation that something's happened by the fact that when I reawaken in the forest, my, my frequency is all gone multidimensional. I'm in bliss and euphoria. And there's all these fighter jets everywhere. And then um, and then on the equinox day, 12 days later, they actually turn up on the Facebook live stream and start flashing us. How much missing time do you think there was? I have no idea. I honestly have no idea. No idea. I. I could probably work it out actually because um because after the after the experience I, I felt like I couldn't find the way out the forest for like one to two hours. And then when I got out, I was kind of I was kind of freaked out, obviously, because these fighter jets, they I was wandering around the forest trying to like process what had happened. Couldn't find the footpath, even though it's only a small forest. It was very strange. And like every 15, then the fighter jets would fly off, then every 15 minutes or so they'd come down and like circle around above my head. I don't know if they could see me through the cloud cover. Maybe they had infrared scanning on or something. Maybe they were what's scanning me. Um, but when I eventually got out of the forest, I, I kind of ran, ran to the car park, got in my car, sped off. And I thought I was nervous, like, you know, about all these military cats. I was getting all sorts of paranoid fears about, you know, maybe the, the military are going to come and get me and take me to the base for, for testing or something. And I, I sped into town and like pulled up at the local gas station in the city, like 11 miles away, and instantly went Facebook Live and did um, and did a Facebook live stream where I'm extremely emotional and kind of going, ah! I'm not scared of you for just like reptilians get lost all this strange stuff coming out of me and, and and that that Facebook live is from as far as I know is still available on my Facebook live stream from September the 11th 2018 so I could so I don't know. I don't know how much missing time there was you could probably I could probably work it out if I look at the time I went to that live stream to some degree but um, 
I don't feel like it was long. You know, maybe for 40 minutes, 40 minutes comes mm. to mind. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, and the experience that you think that you record on the ship, again, um, nothing, um, well, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, from what you're explaining, it sounds like... Um, you're you're trying to re, re explain something that you really don't have much of a comprehension on i would have thought right and it's only just a part memory maybe maybe if that and um yeah you you're seeing things that um you've got no reference to right and um, yes. what's it all mean really what do you th what do you think it all meant really do, do you think it, that was just to show you that potentially just you know Yes, you had been somewhere. What that somewhere is, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a super, super interesting question because kind of what it feels like to me, it, it, it kind of feels like I, like I died, went to another dimension and then got reinserted in physical reality. It was very, very strange. I mean, obviously, I didn't, I, I, I don't know. I mean, what is death that opens up that question? But like it... Like, you know, you hear about people having these near-death experiences, like going to another kind of plane of existence and then coming back to Earth. You know, that's perhaps the closest reference point I could put it to. You know, it, it felt like another dimension of reality. That's the best way I can experience it. You, you know, when you read the Seth books, and they're just the Seth books, it does, you know, I mean, I can't take them. They're not the gospel, right? But they're pretty good. And, you know, they, they talk about the whole UFO phenomena, you know, it's, this, um, that it's just be way beyond our comprehension, way beyond our understanding. And we're still trying to sort our individual selves out, you know, let alone, you know, the UFO question, you know, and actually the Seth books say, just, you know, forget the UFO stuff. <laughs> You've got too much stuff to work on yourself on. Do you know what I mean? Um, and um, yeah, how, how far have we come with the UFO stuff? Not that far. I don't think disclosure is ever going to happen in our lifetime. If the next hundred years, or much, 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 much more. But then that's that's my take on it, and we can ask that when uh, when we channel that question about disclosure. What do you think? Um. Or am I just being a negative, Nancy? <laughs> I I I I'm all, I'm all, I'm always um, the the you know the optimist. I I do feel like disclosure is gonna I, I feel like we're on the you know it's almost happening now you know the, the cia are talking about, about it yeah, yeah. They're, they're, about they're, it. They're, they're admitting that ufos are real that they're, 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 yeah. they've almost said that you know but they're they still don't know what they are they haven't got a yeah. scooby-doo they have not a clue what this is and are we really reverse engineering it I God, think so, probably. I doubt, I, I, think... I doubt it. If we've got technology like that, even from the Roswell, do we even understand the Roswell technology? If we've still even got it, do we barely, have we barely scratched the surface and reverse engineered it? Barely. You know what I mean? When something's so far out of your reality, um, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I I don't know for sure. I, I I I do tend to believe in you know the Bob Lazar story. I do I do believe he's telling the truth. I I don't know if they're advanced as what some people think they are. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of don't knows. I I do think some segments in 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 the in the military know a lot more than they're letting on. I I, you know, it, it's so kind of obvious. You know, you know, if, if I know this much, you know, you know. You know, I can't believe that the like the like the deep in, industrial complex would be so ignorant. You know, I find it hard to believe that I would know so much more than than people in the in in certain segments in the military. Well, see, but think about it though. I mean, they're there to protect our skies. You know, they're not UFO enthusiasts. Yeah, I agree, and I, I think generally that they don't know that much. But I do, I do think there's segments in in the um, in the military who know a lot about what's going on. When did Vice News come into your story? When did that come into your journey? Um, oh, I, I'm not sure on the exact timeline. I, I, I think it was. Um, 
Well, was it like about six years ago? I did that Vice interview. I, I don't know the date on it. it. It must be on my YouTube channel. But they contacted me about a year before that. They were doing a different series, and they, but I, I never got invited on that original series. But then about a year later, they were doing this other series, and they and then I went on that, and they just they I'd never heard of Vice at the time. I, um, they, they were just like we're a media company, and. Um, I just kind of trust my instincts, you know, um, I looked them up, I saw they were quite big. I thought, you know, I, I knew there was a chance they were gonna gonna like make me look a bit ridiculous. <laughs> but I thought this is, you know, such a powerful message that I, I, I trusted my instincts. And well, my what, instincts what did it do for you? Mind. What did it do for you? What did that, uh, uh, you know, now you look back, what did that do for you personally, and also for the work that you're doing as well? Um. Yeah, I, I mean, it didn't, I don't think it, it, it didn't have a huge impact on me. I mean, they, they said when I did the interview, they were going to, they were going to, because in, in the interview, I shared my website and, and like, um, but they cut it out. So it's so if I, would you know, had the opportunity to share my website address in front of all those million, you know, it probably got 10 million views or whatever. You know, I, I think I'd have gone exploded, but they cut out, like they, they never shared any information about my website, but quite a few people like so looked me up and um you know i got a couple of hundred extra subscribers to my youtube channel at the time but but over the years like i i, I get people like um I, i'm always getting people saying the first time i saw you was on vice you know i'm getting clients come to me now like six years later saying i first found you on vice i um i did another interview just on sunday a lady who's just started doing podcasts and she said, you know, she first found me on Vice. So I got, I got, um, you know, I got, I, I did get, you know, I, I got interviewed on a mainstream Australian, uh, like Sydney's, I think, like number one radio show or something, the Kyle and Jackie O show. I've been on um, uh, Irish radio. Um, I, I can't remember his name now, but like, like uh, I want Ireland's number one radio. So I, I recently went on, when I was in Peru, I did a video for um, TV for the Discovery Channel. But it didn't actually go on the Discovery Channel. It went on a channel called Really TV, and it's now airing on the Travel Channel in the US. So I think a lot of this came from that Vice, from that original Vice interview. So um, interesting. Okay, so there was a pause, there was good things about it, and sort of maybe sometimes, you know, yes, they didn't make you look the the best. I mean. But I yeah. suppose <laughs> that's part of your journey, though, isn't it? You know, it's for you to not give a shit, really. And, you know, to be able to move past that and to still continue doing your work. Right. And um, and also, yeah, for some for for the exposure that it still gives you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, like, like 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 I say, like like I, my guides, the IR teach to follow your highest excitement. So so that's all I'm really doing, you know. I, I I'm I, I'm I'm passionate about extraterrestrial contact. It's what I love. You know, I've always been fascinated by it. I, I was, um, you know, back in the day when I was into conspiracy theories. You know, I, I ate up every do documentary on UFOs and and, and contacts. You know, it's um, it's a fascinating thing. It's but but to me, it's like the most. You know, ultimately, I'm on this spiritual path, and I'm really going diving within. You know, on the path of self realization, but. But aside from that, out in the world of phenomena, you know, this is this is the most interesting thing to me in in the in the material world. Okay, okay. Is there any sort of books on the horizon? Do you think? Is there any what what's any sort of future projects that you're thinking of doing? I've um I've been writing a book on and off for years, like like about all my experiences. I've had so many like crazy experiences. Like I was telling on this interview. The other day how like when i had this contact experiences experience i i got power i got paranoid that the military were coming to get me in the first experience to do that because there was like military craft involved in that in 2009 again and and i like um i like kind of asked my my inner intuition like what should i do because i was worried the military were coming for me i'd been smoking a bit of pot before it i think it caused a lot of paranoia uh, and uh, and they said something to me like um, trust trust the forest will open up in front of you I swear to God, I ran full pelt through the forest where normally you just trip over or hit into a tree. And it's like all the trees like opened up in front of me. And like the weekend of this experience, when I, 
I actually um, it was my highest excitement to go to Amsterdam for the weekend because because um, I it was my birthday weekend and after having been been totally clean of everything for a year, I decided to go to Amsterdam and smoke some weed for my um, and this was kind of what initiated this big awakening. And on, on when I was driving to the ferry port, like about 50 miles from here, like all the lights would turn green just as I approached them. I went through about a dozen traffic lights. And as I'm driving up to eat traffic lights, like every single one went kind of red, amber, green, and I drove through. You know, red, amber, green, and I drove through. And red, amber, green, and I drove through. Right? Like it wasn't just they were all green. They'd all changed as I approached them. Like, whoa, something strange is going on here. And I had another experience where where I was I was uh, um, working with weather manipulation through meditation, and I was meditating at a place called Bardney Lock, not too far away from here. I, and um, I'd been doing this kind of cloud busting thing, where you visualise small clouds disappearing. It was working, so I thought, right, I'm going to really put this to the test. It was a day where the sky was completely covered with grey clouds. There wasn't a single bit of blue sky. And I thought, right, I'm going to sit down and I'm, going to, and I'm going to create an exact circle of blue sky directly above my head while I'm meditating. I med- meditate for about 30 minutes, visualising this blue circle of uh, a sky appearing in the cloud. Came out the meditation, it worked. I looked up and there was an, a perfect circle of blue sky directly in the middle of the clouds, you know, and, and like I, I just had so many experiences like that looking back like I forget about them but with all my UFO sightings with all these crazy experiences you know it's going to make a good book when I finally get it finished absolutely now just remind us of your website it is uh jonathantrinity.com okay now on there you offer well tell us what you offer on there actually I offer um I I my one of my main focus at the minute I do a one-to-one spiritual coaching program I, I do a three month six month and nine month trainings where I work one-to-one with clients who are interested in spiritual awakening enhancing their psychic abilities their channeling abilities and extraterrestrial contact so for people who are kind of interested in spiritual awakening but from, from the perspective of kind of psychic capabilities and extraterrestrial contact that's that's my speciality so I coach students through this I also um, teach channeling uh, actually teaching channeling is one of my passions. I'm actually running an extraterrestrial contact course at present, and uh, I run, uh, I, I offer channeling sessions as well. Interesting. Okay, so when you connect with a client, then when a client comes to you for a session, then I guess do you do you know what's going to come through, or is what's coming through best for what the client needs at that time? Yeah, no, no, I, 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 ne- I never know what's coming through at all. And when I think I do, I'm usually wrong. <laughs> I have to think, oh, this is probably what they're going to answer. And it's usually not. They, probably, they they normally always give them a different answer to what I'm expecting. So, yeah, I never know what's going to come through before. Um, yes, most definitely. It's kind of like, as I understand it, like the channeling state is kind of like acting as a mirror, acting as a reflection. And it's um, it's kind of telling, showing people what they already know on some level it's kind of if you understand the idea that reality is a mirror reality is a reflection of us we actually can't experience anything that we don't already believe is true this is how our consciousness evolves everything is actually a reflection and mirror of us and so when in the channeling state what i understand is happening is i'm kind of just acting as a mirror for what the client already understands but it tends to be kind of just under the surface with the client it's kind of realizations that they're just coming to understand within themselves about their own psyche their own consciousness the nature of reality i i sense they're already kind of on the verge of coming to this realization but they're kind of confused it's a bit cloudy or it's in that like unconscious and 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 what i do in the channeling state what seems to happen is i just kind of show them like through the channeling state uh, a reflection of what they already know on some level but but they haven't quite you know fitted together like all parts mm. of the puzzle or right? it's kind of if that makes sense yeah 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 it does it does and yeah and w- whatever being you're connecting with is the one that's going to you know be the most helpful for them at the time D- do the beings or do these entities make themselves known during the the channeling session uh, what client. do you mean like, well they well i mean it's not it, if it, yeah but it's not always the the yell, yell. Do, w- would it say what 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 that energy is that uh, is connecting with you yes yeah 98 percent of the time yes and how easy is it for you to sort of go into that trance state 
Um, generally quite easy now, um, depending on how much I'm channeling. Like I've had a bit of a break recently and it's taking a bit longer. I've just done a few channelings recently and it's taking a bit longer to get into that channeling state now because I've had a bit of a break. But when I'm channeling regularly, I can pretty much, you know, just tap into it almost instantly. Is there any sort of mediumistic side that, that comes through sometimes in the sessions as well? Um, like, like you mean talking to de deceased relatives? Well, and yeah, stuff. yeah. Is there any sort of? Yes, I guess I'm saying that. Yes. R rarely, it's not really my thing. Um, you know, my, my, my father passed a couple of years ago, and you know, I, I have connected into him, and um, I, I remember a, a family member's um, their, their mother's funeral. Um, I was at the funeral and everyone was stood around the coffin and um and you know the coffin the crematorium goes behind behind the curtains and disappears to be burnt away and at that point everyone turns away and walks away from the coffin and i could hear the lady who had deceased you know my, my family me member's mother saying, jonathan jonathan they're all leaving where are they going where are they going where are they going she was freaking out because because she was fine because she she's her consciousness is still sort of centered around the coffin um i'm guessing something like that and then everyone stood around the coffin but then all of a sudden she goes she, she's going into like um, her body's going into be cremated and, then, and at that point, everyone turns away, you know, in the traditional cremation ceremony and walks out of the crematorium outside to, you know, have the condolences and share flowers and all that. And at that point, all of a sudden, she starts talking to me and she's like, Jonathan, where are they going? Where are they going? Where are they going? Where are they going? She's like freaking out because everyone's everyone thinks she's gone. And she's like, she's like, I'm, I'm here, Jonathan. Why are they leaving me? And so so that, that's why one of the most profound experiences I've had. Wow. Okay, but nothing, nothing more than that. That was probably, yeah, one one of very it's few. It's not common for me. It's always yeah. been more of my excitement to connect with, like, like, like you know, my my theory has kind of been, you know, why why would I want to connect with humans? You know, there's the seven billion humans on this planet, and they're mostly boring and unintell unintelligent generally. <laughs> You know, when, when I can connect with these higher dimensional beings that have all this wisdom and they're really high frequency, you know, it's just, it's just not interesting for me to connect with humans. You know, I have to talk to humans every day. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Yes. That's, uh, yes. Why not? That's, that's right. Um, OK, well, uh, if you want to, we could just do a, a little bit of channeling. Um, I'm sure I've got some questions that I think um, might be interesting. Yes, for sure, for sure. If I can just have a mouthful of water with my very um, professional um, glass. Smaller than in Peru, they're five litre bottles in the UK. In Peru, they were seven litre bottles. So wow, that's a big bottle. <laughs> a bit like an American bottle, yeah. Um, well, if you just talk the audience through just what your process is as you start to connect then, yeah, what is that process? Yes, yeah, so, so basically I do some deep breathing. Um, that increases my prana levels. Like, like in yoga and yogic teachings, they, they teach that like life force energy, prana or chi, sometimes called orgone even. When you breathe in through your nose, we have prana receptors at the back of our nose and this increases our life force energy, increases our prana levels. So I do deep breathing to bring more prana into my system to raise my frequency as well as increasing the oxygen levels to my brain because we need more oxygen levels in our brain when we're channeling. If I do some deep breathing, I then do something to kind of awaken my chakras. Sometimes when I'm teaching channeling, I'll do some toning. Maybe I'll do a little bit of toning first just to give an example. I don't need to so much myself because I can kind of open up my chakras quite quickly naturally now. And then I'll recall the um, the experience of being on the Yael ship. I used to do it differently to that before 2018, but it's just a real easy way for me to connect in with their frequency. Because as soon as I think about that experience that I just told you, um, being on the Yaya ship, it instantly like my consciousness goes, <clears throat> I'm connected. So, so that's basically the process I go through. And then 
And then when someone asks you questions, it actually creates a grounding circuit. I, I teach when I teach in channeling, I say you should always get someone to sit in front of you and ask you questions because it kind of creates like a grounding system, like an electrical circuit. It's like you've got the higher entity up here, you know, just just you know, symbolically, they're not necessarily up there, but you kind of got the higher entity up here, you've got me in the middle, then you've got the, got the questioner here, and it kind of pulls information through me, kind of like a grounding or an earth wire and an electrical circuit, pulling energy into the ground. So um, so that's generally my process. Okay, okay, interesting. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, so I'll just let you connect and, um, yeah. Okay, so I'll start with a little bit of toning then to um, just to give an example of it. Because basically I tone to the frequency of each chakra. We've got the root sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye and crown chakra. And when we open up all our chakras, particularly the heart, throat, third eye and crown, we're opening up our access into the higher dimensions. The, the crown chakra directly connects us to infinity. The third eye chakra connects us to kind of the wisdom contained in infinity. And the throat chakra allows me to express it and the heart chakra connects me to the infinite love of creation and so when i'm connected with these four chakras this this is how i access the channeling state I notice animals always seem drawn to me when I start channeling. My, my um my family cat is just um sat outside the window now. It always happens. <laughs> I think they sense the higher energies somehow. Good day. Hello. Hello, Earth. Hello. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Podcast Network. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to this pitch, this frequency, this dimension of reality. I am Tahinio of the Yael. Do you have questions for us at this time, Kevin? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think my first question is going to be um, uh, with Jonathan and his recollection of the... Um, of what he thinks was his experience on board a craft and um was was he recalling there you know parts of a recollection of a um well would you call it an abduction well you could term it an abduction he didn't see it coming he had for some years been trying to initiate contact with us he was reaching out to us to have the contact experience but we kind of grabbed him when he was least expecting it so we didn't get too nervous so would you call that an abduction perhaps what is what is his connection with those uh, that created that craft or the, the the race behind all this what is his karmic connection well, he is one of us in another lifetime, in another galaxy far, far away. He is one of us. He is an, in another dimension coexisting on our ship right now. For he is actually me. I am him. He is us. We are both of the same soul construct. Okay. So are you a future version of us? Are you? Um... Yes. So you're coming from the future into what we would class as now and for what purpose well for the purpose of being a mirror much like the channel explained we are we are merely mirrors of perhaps your greater potential mirrors of perhaps where your civilization is going all of you in your hearts know there is something better destined for this world, something better destined for this plane. At present, you are going through a lot of strife, a lot of chaos, a lot of suffering in your reality. And all of you on some level know that something is deeply, deeply wrong with your world, but you do not quite understand it. You cannot quite hit the nail on the head. Much in your Matrix movie, they say you say you all understand there is something wrong. There is something not quite right with your world, but you do not know what it is. But on some level of your being, you do. 
all the love is missing, all the love is gone, all the higher guidance is dissolved, God has been lost, God is dead, as one of your famous philosophers once said. Of course, God is not truly dead, God is omnipresent and ever here. And this is really what we are here to reflect back to you, the idea that God is you, God is source, God is here and always an omnipresence. And the idea of omnipresence means that God exists in all things, and therefore God is you and God is me, and we are all God. Amen. Yeah. Um, so by you connecting to this moment in in um, time right now, what what is that actually doing to you in the future then? I... Well, there really is no future. Linearly speaking, you are having the experience of time on Earth, but time is really germane only to your dimension and a few other dimensions in reality. Time does not exist within our plane. For if time really existed and we were really 700 to 1,000 years in your future, we would not be able to communicate with you because we would be in the future, you would be in the past. But we understand that as God is omnipresent, creation is omnipresent, and all reality is omnipresent, and all exists here and now as us. We are one infinite organism experiencing reality from multiple different perspectives, all existing in the here and now. So ultimately, there is no time. And so this is how we are able to speak to you in the here and now. This is the illusion. There is infinite multidimensional reality all coexisting on different frequencies, different dimensions, different planes of existence, all here and now in this conscious illusion we are co-creating at this time. Well, that was my misunderstanding then. Yeah. OK, so what you're saying is that, um, yeah, you're 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 out of you're out of. Um, yeah, it's not as I would or I was perceiving like the future future. It's actually. um it's different wavelengths. Yeah, this is some other yeah wavelength or, I mean, I don't know. Another if... wavelength, another frequency of your own consciousness that you are not aware with because you are not fully tuned to our frequency. However, in this moment, you are beginning to tune your wavelength to our frequency and beginning to perceive our reality. You can maybe even notice a slight adjustment in your state of being in the frequency you feel within yourself at this time. With the UFO phenomena, then, um, it, it's not really of major interest to me because we are struggling just with day to day stuff, right? Just yes, with, very good. Um, Thank you for your compassion for your world. Yeah, ju ju just just with our, you know, with human issues that we've got. I mean, the the UFO side of things. Um, Yes, as we have said, it is our goal to put you back in contact with your own true nature, for your own nature is infinite and unbound, and with your own infinite unbound nature exists the ability to tap into infinite intelligence, intelligent infinity, from where you can find the answers to solve the problems in your world. This is our main goal, to put you back in contact with your own self, your true self, self, capital S, where the answers to all your questions lie. Okay. Yeah, so this whole thing about um, UFO disclosure, for example, which is getting away from what I'm just trying to touch upon in the first place right now, but, um, you know, that, that I don't feel that's ever going to happen in my lifetime. And if you want disclosure, maybe it's on a more personal level. You know, do I truly believe that there's more in the universe than, than, than just this? Yes. You know, is ET going to start, you know, make, making mass content, contact, um and, and we're all going to know that there's, you know, intelligent life out there in my lifetime? No. Well, understand this. There is not one Earth. There are actually seven billion versions of Earth all existing within the consciousness of each individual. The idea of there being one Earth with seven billion individuals populating the Earth is actually an illusion. All of your reality actually exists within your consciousness and you are creating its moment to moment. So if, for example, you believe disclosure will not occur for 100 years, your beliefs are actually creating your reality vibrationally. The vibrations you emit into reality are creating your world, your reality, your environment moment to moment. So if, for example, as the channel believes, disclosure is likely within the ten, next 10 years and you believe disclosure is actually 
more likely within 100 years, you will actually split off into different planes of existence from here to forth. And you will experience a reality where disclosure doesn't occur in your lifetime unless you live to over 140, for example. We do not know how old you are. And the channel will experience a reality where disclosure experiences before he hits 60. And so what will actually occur is the channel will shift to a version of reality where you either do not exist in that reality or a different parallel reality version of you exists who did believe, who came to the belief somewhere in that interim 14, 10 years that disclosure would occur. And you will shift to a parallel timeline where other the channel, you never connect with the channel again. The channel just seems to disappear from your reality or you will manifest a version of the channel channel that did not believe disclosure was going to happen in his lifetime does that make sense in your world it does um then we're constantly shifting realities yes billions of times a second a new parallel universe an entirely new universe billions of times per second all unique to your own consciousness it's like going to bed yet you wake up and you know maybe uh maybe things have, have shifted slightly maybe everything looks the same but there's just slight changes that you're not really aware of but you've made those changes with decisions and perceptions about life and reality yes and and as as you as you come more to grips with this understanding and you are able to use it to create the reality you prefer yourselves, those shifts can become more and more evident. You can literally wake up in the morning and your reality seems completely different. The channel actually experienced this recently where he released a series of videos on his YouTube channel called the Timeline Shift ET Contact Project where he created a group and got all group members to visualize the idea of open contact and disclosure happening at an accelerated rate. He ran this pro this project just around three months ago, just before he left Peru. And lo and behold, on returning to the UK a few weeks later, everyone was talking about disclosure. A NASA panel had been created with a group of several scientists to look into the idea of UFO phenomena. There were disclosure talks live being broadcast on congress there were there were congress there were meetings with officials dis disclosing their experiences within the military the, the the channel by using this modality actually managed to significantly accelerate and shift his timelines to move to a timeline where disclosure actually appeared to be on the horizon but when we talk about shifting realities and seven billion other earths out there or more you know, that we can, which our consciousness shifts to, not the human body, right? Um, I'm guessing that's what you mean. That, that, uh... so the human, so you, your, your body is a projection of your consciousness. Your, your body is contained within the shift. You are actually non physical consciousness, infinite consciousness, projecting billions of different physical bodies every second. So you, your body is within the projection, your body was in the shift. You are not within the body. Your body is within you. Well, I, I want to. I want to get to the body where I've got my abs and I've not had to do much work for them. But um, uh, yeah, okay. So now it's possible. It's truly possible if you believe it. Oh, it it will be possible because I. I yeah, but it, only if uh, if I'm going to work out, right? I. I, I well, I, not necessarily, because your beliefs create your reality, and there are actually technologies in your reality that you will become aware of that can muscle up your abs with that doing. No work, such as these electrostatic shock pads you can use. Oh, I hate so those things. So even within your limited reality, there are yeah. ways you can build your abs without any doing any workout. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, me and them are not a big fan of each other. Um, so okay, so so hang on a minute. So if you've got to go through an event in your life, right, that you're destined to go through, and no matter how much shifting around you do, right, or wanting to change to to Earth, you know you know whatever number you want to try to get to which you never perceive it like that because it doesn't work like that but i'm just saying however much you change things you cannot get around this particular life event right whatever that is an illness or a particular thing that you've got to see through sometimes we're destined aren't we on this path to to go through this particular thing regardless of how much we you know we think we're shifting around well Yes and no. Ultimately, you create your reality. So no. But the idea is you're creating your reality in time in tandem with your soul, in tandem with your higher consciousness. You are you, your higher self, 
your oversoul, other aspects of your greater connection to earth and source. You're all co-creating this reality together. And for example, you might want to instantaneously manifest $1 million out the blue for doing nothing. But your higher mind understands that that's not really relevant for your growth on this world, that really on a deeper level, you know you want to expand your consciousness, you want to learn to embody unconditional love, you want to learn deep compassion for others, which is generally the goal for many of you in this incarnation at this time. But from your human perspective, sometimes you can kind of get a bit lazy. And like, I don't want to do that. I just want a million dollars. I want my own island. I want to withdraw from all this. So it's kind of you're coming from a more ego-based perspective, perspective, a more selfish perspective, where you as an individual, you really know that's not what you want. You want to help people. You want to grow in compassion. You want to grow in love. You want to grow in consciousness. You want to experience the juice of reality. You want to dive into the darkness as much as you want to experience the light, because that's where the juice of earth exists. So it's all, it's all a view of perspective. The more you become aligned with your soul mission, the more you become aligned with the consciousness of your higher mind. And you really begin to think from that higher perspective. For example, wanting to learn to grow in love, grow in unconditional love, wanting to learn to grow in compassion, wanting to learn your growth, to grow your telepathic connection to infinity so you can learn to bring through deep gifts of this reality. On some level, you know that's more enticing, more intoxicating to run that path. And on a soul level, you certainly know this is true. But from an ego perspective, you might be like, I don't want that. I just want to play video games, smoke pot and have an infinite bank account. So it's really what perspective you're looking at reality from. If you're coming from a kind of disconnected, egotistical, selfish, lazy human perspective, then perhaps no, perhaps you could say there's some kind of destiny, some kind of challenges that you can't really go around. But when you come to really align with your higher mind, when you come to see things from the higher perspective, from the greater perspective, see, understand how you grow, how you evolve, how you can serve humanity to the greatest degree, and you begin to come from a place of infinite, unconditional love, infinite compassion, and connecting this to source, from that perspective, you can begin to choose exactly what you experience in reality. Does that make sense? Yes and no. Um, I mean, when you say soul mission, isn't that just as simple as where is your value fulfillment? You know, I mean, none of I can't remember my soul mission. I do know what where my value fulfillment might be taking me. That's easy to tune into. Yes, yes, it is basically the same thing, if we understand your terminology correctly. It's what you know in your heart to be true. Yeah, and this idea of like being here of service, I'm changing my mind on that. I th I call BS on that a little bit at this moment because uh, you, you can, you, I mean, you, being, value, being of service to others, what, when you can't even be of service to yourself? Where, where is self taken care of first? It, 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 I mean, some of us aren't even able to meet our own needs. Do you know what I mean? So when, when you understand that others are you and you are others and there is only one entity in creation, your question no longer even makes sense because there is no other and there is no self. But in, in this three in 3D reality, there is. Well, no, there isn't. You can have the experience of being separate, but it's not true. It's a fallacy. We are you. Every being in your reality is you. And so. But while you're in a separate, while I'm like this right now, if I didn't take care of my needs, how, how you know, and if, I, if I started saying, you know what, I'm just going to do everything for everyone else. Fuck me. And I'm like, no, that's not quite right. I don't, don't know if that's the way I would be thinking anymore. You've got to. How can you give from, to anyone if you're not looking after your own needs? We, we agree. We agree. We would not disagree with that statement. We are just pointing out the fact that other is you and you are other. So technically, service to other is service to self because they are you. But yes, we, we would say look after yourself as much as you look after others. Service to self and service to others is one. Yeah, I mean, I'm not here, here to be cruel to anyone, but what I'm saying is, is, is you know... Um, if let me just get my thinking here right if um because I'm, I'm a bit bit tired if um if i'm doing something that i really enjoy then it's a natural side effect for it to be of, of service to someone else in the end 
Yes. So, so understand the idea, and this is why we point to the idea of always following your passion, following your highest excitement. For what you term in your reality as your passion, your highest excitement is actually your soul mission, is actually your calling. For the idea is that your soul, your higher self, source, if you wish to look at it from this perspective, is actually guiding you through moment to moment through your excitement. When you are acting on something that excites you, causes fulfillment, causes passion, causes any what you would turn the positive frequency. This is actually because you are tuning into the vibration of your soul, of your higher consciousness, of your soul mission. And so the idea is that the soul, the higher self, sees the bigger picture and always understands what is of the greatest benefit to others. So so, so there really is no difference between being of service to other and following your passion. You just need to distinguish what is truly your passion and understand that it's coming from a heart-centered higher frequency and not a lack-based, fear-based frequency, You're not, not kind of the false passion of I want to have a million dollars and flake out playing video games all day. Yeah. Um, w- what if someone's passion, though, is to, you know, to to ha- um, uh, experience wealth, experience, you know, one, one the passion of wealth, the passion of... Um... It could be. But it, it's up to you. The, the secret is to choose. There is no one right and wrong for any individual. It may be some person's true path to experience the idea of wealth so they can bring the idea of abundance to reality. So the idea is tuning, is ultimately defining between excitement and fear. If it's coming from fear, it's out of alignment and it's not of service to the whole. If it's coming from passion, joy, true passion, joy and excitement, it is of the higher frequency and is of service to the whole. So you've got to determine why you would want to flake out, smoke pot and play video games all day. Is it truly your highest excitement or is it kind of coming from a kind of fear of embracing reality for the highest, most accelerative rate you can? It's it's on an individual basis. Yes. And, and uh, you know, we so easily judge others, but, you know, um, yeah, um, we don't know quite where they're coming from sometimes. Yeah. Um, Am, am I speaking to like a group right now? Is is this a group energy that, in a sense? Yes. We do. We do not really understand the idea of separation. It makes no sense in in our perspective of reality. It is hard to say I am an individual. Individual from what you we could I could say I am an individual, but that individual contains everyone and everything. The idea of one and one being the same thing. One, I, I am, I am one, but I am one. Right. This idea of uh, disclosure, right? Um, is that is that going to stop? Um, what is that? Uh, is that going to stop us going down a destructive path? Because I, I, I'm not so so sure if it's going to. <laughs> Not necessarily, not necessarily. It doesn't guarantee anything, no. I mean, you would have thought, wouldn't you, that if there was some sort of disclosure that was highly ultra-intelligent life out there. But, I mean, if there is disclosure, what, what is it disclosure of? Because are these, are, these, uh, are these things that we see in the sky actually of this dimension or of this string, uh, of, of, of this shared universe? Because it seems to me that there's something that's beyond our understanding so what is the disclosure of that there's other dimensions there's i mean what you know do you know what i mean i mean i mean you've got people well, like stephen greer that think they're going to get free energy and i think the only th- thing the, the thing that stephen's done is is made his bank account bigger personally sorry to all the people that don't like me saying that well but... d- d- disclosure is a term that you your reality has created and it will You know, disclosure could mean many things. It could mean a bunch of lies. It could mean a half truth. It could mean introducing us you to the fact that we are real. It could could mean introducing you to the truth that we are you. But to what point? I mean, are we? I mean, mean, you're not going to give us the whatever whatever. Say there's some disclosure. I mean, they're not going to say, well, you know, here's the blueprints for free energy devices and everything else. You know, kumbaya, everything's great now, and um, you know, you know. disclosure all, all our technology i just don't think that that's in our um 
It, it, no. No. No, not, not, not while there are still so many governors of your world involved in the idea of war and domination. It would be not it would not be safe to us to give you these technologies. It would be like giving the children the matchboxes. Well, yeah, I mean, um, which is what uh, the creation of the nuclear, um, you know, um, bomb um, sort of gave us in a sense. Um, and look what we did with it. Um, yeah, well, look, well, look, look how many there are right now. Do you know what I mean? Um, which is uh, not good. So disclosure would would mean it, well I guess what you're saying it, it it wouldn't mean much except that for some of us it might bring about some sort of spiritual shift to know that there is something much much more but it wouldn't be um, okay now we've got flying cars and everything else it's, it's something much different to that yes it would initially be a shift in consciousness the word hopefully and this is why we are playing things very cagely and making sure we come through at exactly the right timing. It would cause a shift in consciousness that would hopefully, and we sense you are moving in this direction slowly but surely, would hopefully and most likely shift you to the idea of unconditional love and the realization that you are all one. For as we come into your plane of reality, one of the side effects of merging with our with our vibrational field, our auric vehicle, the aura of our crafts, which are also intelligent consciousness entities and ourselves, one of the side effects of having this experience often shifts you to our vibrational level where you directly understand and directly experience that you are one with us, that we are you, we are an aspect of your deeper consciousness, and you are also connected to all things in creation. There is no separation in creation. So one of the side effects, if you call it that, or one of the main effects, the primary effects from our perspective, is that you are coming to understand that there is no separation. You are one and all on your world. And so... This realization obviously takes you to a place. Well, why would I create walls if I understand that the people I am attacking are actually me? It's like, why would I cut off my own arm? It no longer makes any sense. The caveat being that the process of shifting into a state of unity consciousness and oneness and self realization will very often bring to the surface many subconscious fears and beliefs and ways of operating that are very divisive, are very segregative, are very fear-based in reality. And so, so very often these experiences can cause levels of psychosis, can cause levels of mental, emotional instability, that, which can actually turn the experience in the opposite direction, turn to fear, violence, hatred, greed, destruction. So, so this is the issue we are navigating, and this is why we don't just land on the White House lawn, besides the fact that there are many weapons in that area that tend to get pointed in the direction of invaders. Uh, yes, yes, you may not want to do that. Um, um, but then how, how would uh, major religions cope with that disclosure? Because the, I, I don't know, is there the space in their religious texts to to expand? Um, in, in the depth, in the core of those religions, yes. All major religions are pointing you back to the idea of unity consciousness, of the true nature, of heaven within, of the true self, of oneness. However, there is much overlay on dogma that has evolved over the years, and this is where the problem relies. So, so yes, if those religions can be stripped back to their core essential teachings through the introduction of our wisdom and our perspective, they would survive. They would grow and expand but ultimately merge and become perhaps one what you may call religion but more one we would call scientific understanding of the physics of creation which is all the core of religion is so an understanding of the deeper science behind the metaphysics of reality do we have a few bumps on the road to go through first do we is there some major shift bigger than what we've ever seen that we've got to pass through to to get to yes mm. Mm. yeah it's going to be challenging there's no two ways about it it's going to be difficult it's going to be challenging it's going to be a strain on all of you 
for, for really this understanding, this shift you are going through is going to strip you all back to your own core, strip away a lot of your beliefs about who you are, what you are, why you are here, what you should do in your reality. And that can be uncomfortable. It can even be painful. And so, yes, it's going to be challenging. No one truly knows how this is going to unfold. We have faith in you. We believe in you. We probably wouldn't be interacting with you if we didn't believe you could do this. But it's not going to be easy. It is going to be challenging on a level that you have not really experienced, certainly in the individuals alive at this time on your world. It's going to be a great awakening and it's going to be a bumpy road. But it's up to you to make the shift within. Be the change you wish to see in the world, as some wise people have said before in your reality. Be the shift. Be the shift within. The more you can shift into unconditional love in yourselves, the more you can begin to live your life, your passion, your purpose, your calling, your mission, your, your realization of the truth in reality, the more you will shift yourselves to timelines, to parallel realities where things are running more smoothly. But there will be some bumps. It is inevitable. And it's exciting when you understand you are an infinite immortal consciousness that cannot be touched. Ultimately, you can experience some pain. You can experience some physical symptoms. But when your physical body drops, you just move to another plane of reality. If you can experience it from this dimension, stay centered, stay peaceful, stay joyful, stay in your own heart, it becomes an exciting ride. It becomes an exciting journey for your world is where it's happening in the universe. There are many extraterrestrial civilizations. There are many higher dimensional beings peering into your world at this time because Earth is where it's at. This is where the path is at. There are very few places in reality at this time, as we understand it, that are experiencing such a shift from the darkness into the light, from the polarity of separation, of greed, fear, anger, disconnection, worry, into the polarity of connection, oneness, unity, unconditional love, compassion, service to other and self simultaneously in the knowing that you are all one. This shift is where it's happening within your universe, within this reality. And this is why there is so much extraterrestrial activity accelerating in your world, because everyone wants to watch the party. Everyone wants to watch the journey of unfolding. And you have the front row seats. You are where it's at. Incarnations are a prime desire in creation to incarnate on your world. This is one of the reasons your world is so highly populated at this time, because every soul in creation wants to be on Earth. This is where the party's at. It can feel uncomfortable. It can feel terrible at some times, we understand, but this is where it's happening. There are few places in creation at all that are experiencing the, this kind of pivotal point of existence, of the coexistence of such darkness and light simultaneously, and the opportunity to transcend it into a whole new world. This is where the party's at. This is where the blockbuster movie is happening and you all have front row seats. So we just suggest you sit back, relax, get your popcorn out and enjoy the journey for what it is. For, for when you leave this world, you will see what a gift it was to be able to experience this for your own growth, for your own acceleration as souls and for the understanding of how you can be of greater service to the evolution of the universe and creation as a whole. Amen. Well, I just want to thank you so, so much for uh, what you've had to say there. And I'll let uh, Jonathan come back in. But thank you very much for connecting and giving us that, um, that, that time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kevin. We hope we woke you up and we speak on more levels than one with that statement. And we shall see you in another now. Shivai. Peace, love, light. Amen to you all. Good day. Well, that was um, really interesting. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I'm glad you. I'm glad you found it interesting. Yeah, um, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me neither. <laughs> no, um, that was good. That was really good. And I'm sure that that others will find that uh, helpful as well. Jonathan, just remind us of your website one last time as well before we go. Yeah, it's jonathantrinity.com. It's uh, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-T-R-I-N-I-T-Y.com, jonathantrinity.com. And you can also find all my social media platforms. Uh, Jonathan Trinity Martin, that, that's the name I'm currently using on Earth. Uh, Jonathan Trinity Martin, you can find me on TikTok, Facebook, 
YouTube under Jonathan Trinity Martin. And um, so thank you everyone for tuning in and tuning in in more ways than one. That 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 word takes a whole a whole new level now, doesn't it? So <laughs> it absolutely does. And thank you as well. I I mean that as well. Thank you for um. That was interesting that 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 channeling was. Thank you so much for for coming on as well and for um you know just uh letting that energy come through for everyone. So yep, and and I'm sure I, I pass her across again. So just thank you so so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. The, the, the channeling seems to take on a whole new level. Like it's kind of like the, the the wider audience I'm speaking to, the more energy and the more profound the messages that come through. I remember experiencing this when I did the Vice interview, and it's almost like that. You know, well, obviously they do. They know they're speaking to a wide audience, and I don't know, but it just seems to come through more profoundly um, and and more, you know, more powerfully when there's when it's speaking to a wide audience. And I, I know you have quite quite a large following on your YouTube channel. And, and I suspect some of your other platforms. So, so, um, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this positive message with um, with your with your platform. So, thank you to your listeners, and thank you to you very much, Kevin, for this opportunity. Mm -hmm.